I'm Franklin Walker. I was in the United States Air Force from 1966 to 1970. And I served in uh, Southeast Asia in Thailand from 19, November of 1968 to November of 1969. I served uh, three months at uh, Nang Kham Phanam NKP and the remaining time at Karat. Marvelous experience. I worked with a great uh, group of people who were very professional in what they did in radio and television. Uh, a very loose group of people who enjoyed good times and uh, it was just a marvelous experience. And the Thai people uh, treated us very well, and we were very, very fortunate with that. We flew up and we saw this red dust uh, cloud on the horizon, and we landed in it. And it, that was in KP, and as we were touching down and coming down the runway, I noticed there was a large number of A1E Sky Raiders and B-26 bombers. And the thought was, I've flown into a time warp. It looked like World War II because these aircraft were used in pilot rescue and a few other missions, but uh, those were my first impressions. And the second most important impression I had is when I was taken by the uh, station manager for the radio station and was giving a tour of the, of the facility. We got back to where the transmitter was and he said, now uh, uh, right here is an ax and when we are overrun, we are to take out the transmitter first. And I says, what do you mean, when we're overrun? Well, this is November of 1968. He said, well, there's about 40,000 Pot of Lao just across the Mekong River in Laos, and there's at least 300,000 Red Chinese massing on their borders. At that point in time, they thought China may be coming into the conflict. And so those are my opening thoughts and remarks and feelings. <laughs> I thought I was up there to uh, work in radio and television and didn't really realize that uh, that part of the world in Thailand was right on the front lines. And subsequently we did learn too that uh, in addition to our work in Thailand that there's a large uh, interest in Laos and Cambodia from that part of Thailand also, which was not generally known to the uh, U.S. folks. I was on air briefly uh, in radio until we got the television station going. I had not been in, in uh, radio broadcasting before. My experience was in television, but because I was there and they needed help, I, they made me a disc jockey for about two and a half weeks, and that was enough, thank you. I was responsible for programming and putting uh, our what live segments we had on the air. and We were very serious about it. We did our weather news and sports, and uh, we did, uh, our, our job was to be a, as professional as we could and get the information out to our troops and we took that very seriously. Working with so many good and professional people, after I was in NKP for three months, I was reassigned to the Karat Network headquarters and there I was able to work with a, large num a larger number of professionals and uh, uh, while on the job, these folks were very professional and very good and uh, uh, off the job they were also very interesting folk. We, we enjoyed our time away from the station, long days, 12 to 14 hours a day, and so when we, when, when we did relax, it was uh, intense also. If we had a chance to uh, leave base and go into the uh, Thai community, we would do that. There was a number of restaurants that was frequented by uh, U.S. folks and good food, and, and as I said earlier, the Thai people in general were very uh, friendly and enjoyed the Americans and uh, so it was just, uh, and, and the, the American GI, whether it's Air Force or Army or whatever, likes kids and the kids liked us and so we had good interchanges and, uh, and then of course there's on base the Airmen's Club, the NCO Club, the Officers Clubs. When I was up at NKP was the most interesting one. I happened to go into town uh, with some others and we were along the uh, Mekong River and we had oh, probably seven or eight youngsters that were following us. They were just curious as to who we were and so we stopped and we talked to them and uh, uh, I happened to have some gum and of course they all liked the gum and uh, surprisingly they all were able to speak pretty good English. So uh, they had hung around GIs enough to pick up uh, enough English that uh, we had some nice conversations. I wasn't sure what the, uh, the local Thai folks were thinking about our presence in their country, 
But uh, I, I do have to say that the, uh, the Air Force did a marvelous job really preparing us for our time in country. We had uh, a whole list of things of culture, cultural uh, differences and what we should expect and what we shouldn't be doing and this and that. And uh, it, if you follow those guidelines, you got a nice uh, reception. Even though we were in broadcasting, uh, we were close to a lot of folks who were on the front lines. Up at NKP especially, uh, that was a primary base for air pilot rescue, uh, where these uh, pilots, uh, helicopter pilots and pilots of the A1Es who would go out into the jungles of Thailand and basically Laos and uh, risk their lives to uh, pick up downed pilots. At that time frame in the early 1968-69, uh, our presence in Laos and Cambodia was uh, not generally known. And so most of these missions were high-risk missions because we had to keep them secret. And uh, these guys just put everything on the line. And that's what really inspired, I think, the AFRTS folks, is because we understood the, the dangers that they were going through. And uh, so it was up to us to provide with our skills uh, entertainment and information. And we did it well.